on this episode of Repair Geek, how to go from this to this with nothing more than silicone, glass cleaner, and some of your time. All right, so to be able to get the condensation out of this, the first thing we gotta do is we have to get it off the car. So in the case of this Mustang, it has basically two pins that you pull out, and then the headlight should be pretty much free. It's got two pins in the back here that hold it in. This is gonna vary from car to car, obviously. So you need to uh, kind of figure out what you need to do for your particular car to be able to remove the headlight. Once you get the light loose, you have to get the bulbs out of the back of the headlight assembly, and then we'll take the headlight assembly over to the bench. So now that we have the light over to the bench, we can see exactly how much condensation is inside this thing. I've had luck in the past with uh, basically taking the bulbs out of the back of the light, and if you just have like a small amount of condensation over in the corner, what you can do is you can take the headlight or the tail light or whatever you're working on and put it in the oven. When you, after you take all the bulbs out and put it in the oven at like 200 degrees for you know an hour or so, and eventually that moisture will evaporate out of the light. You can put everything back together and be done. In this case, it's all the way across, all the way around. So. I'm gonna separate the lens from the back and I'm gonna show you guys how I do that. And basically, most cars that you go look at have some sort of a seam where the lens meets the back of the light. So the whole reason this happens, there is like a silicone or glue seal that goes all the way around the outside edge of this light where the lens meets the back of the light. And basically, you have a, a corner or some, some section of the light has a gap in that seal and it's letting that moisture get inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the, the lens from the back of the light, pull this off, wipe all this condensation out, clean everything up on the inside, put a nice fresh bead of silicone all the way around this light and put the whole thing back together. The glue that holds this light together is very gummy and a little bit of heat does a lot of good. So if you have a heat gun or a soldering iron or something like that. I'm actually gonna be using a matte gas torch turned like basically all the way down as low as I can get the flame to go and just keep it moving. If you hold it in one spot too long, you're gonna burn either the back or the lens or something. If you keep it moving, the glue will loosen up and you can get in there with a screwdriver basically, get a screwdriver in here and start working that edge all the way around the light. So you have to be very, very patient when you do this so you don't destroy anything. Before you guys go ripping and tearing at your headlights trying to get them open, double check and see and make sure that you don't have any screws or bolts holding the two together. In my case, I had a couple Phillips screws that I had to take out and once I got those out, it's basically just a combination of heating up a section of the light with the torch and prying a little bit and scraping some glue out and heating it up some more and prying some more glue out. I suppose you could use an oven to try and heat the light up, but I only own one oven at my house and I wasn't trying to heat a light up in my oven at, you know, two to 300 degrees and then use it for cooking later. So I wasn't really interested in doing it. I'm sure you can do it, but use it at your own discretion. Once you do get the light apart, you're gonna have multiple sections. So you're gonna have the lens on the outside, like an intermediate piece in between the outer lens and the reflector in the back. I separated all three of those and wiped all of them clean. The total time to get this thing apart, figure 20 to 40 minutes, depending on the light that you're working on. And for this whole procedure, figure an hour to an hour and a half per light. That's gonna greatly vary on how, depending on how fast you get the lights apart, because I would say that's probably 80% of your labor is just having the patience to get this apart. If you have to walk away from it, walk away from it and come back later. One thing you need to remember while you're doing this is don't be afraid to try it simply because the lights you're working on were probably junk anyway if you're tearing them apart or you're willing to tear them apart. You're not really going to break anything if it's already broken if you get what I'm saying. Uh, Chris Fix has a video out about how to fix condensation in headlights and the way he does it in his video is he removes a headlight from the car and fills it full of water and then basically sees where the water is leaking out around the seal to know where to reseal the light. The issue is with that, when you get done, because you've filled the light full of water, you're gonna have water spots all over the lens and all over the reflector and all over the inside of the light. So the way I'm doing it, you're gonna end up with a better result.
All right, now that everything's apart, you want to go through and clean everything. So clean the water out of the lens, obviously, but you also want to clean some of this extra glue off this outside edge. Uh, I wouldn't say you have to clean off all of it, but just clean off just enough that the two halves are going to meet once again. Uh, so basically anything that isn't going to let the two halves come together, clean that out. So on this other half, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean out the light bucket, obviously, and I'm going to clean out probably half of this silicone slash glue, whatever this crap is that they put in here. Uh, I don't clean out all of it simply because that's just that much more sealant that you're going to have to use to fill that cavity back up when you put the two halves back together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera and I will bring you guys back in a minute. If you have a pencil soldering iron, this would be probably the ideal tool to put in here because it's hot and just run down this channel and clean all that crap out. I don't have one, I only have the pistol grip style and the tip is too wide to fit in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to heat the end of my screwdriver up with a torch and just get it down inside that groove and just clean that groove out as best as I can. Make sure you take your time when you're cleaning this light simply because the cleaner it is, the better it's going to look once it's back together. All right, so I got, I got a nice clean, well, let's be serious, somewhat clean groove around the edge of this light. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and fill this up with a RTV adhesive. I'll put a link in the description for some. Um, and I'm basically, I'm not gonna fill that channel up all the way, but I'm gonna fill it up at least about halfway all the way around the outside edge. Once I get that done, I'm going to go ahead and lay the, the lens back in this corner because it goes in this way and then you go like this and push it together. The lights are going to go together much quicker than what they came apart, so do not get in a rush. The reason I say that is because you're only going to get one real attempt to put these lights back together. If you're using an RTV silicone like I am, if you go to pull the lights apart because you don't have something seated correctly, the outside edges of the lens are going to be covered in RTV. If you get that on your hands and you touch the lens, it's going to be on the lens. Well, because it's wet, you can't simply just wipe it off. It's going to smear. If you separate the light, my suggestion would be just to walk away from it, let it sit overnight, come back the next day, and then just chip the RTV off piece by piece. Because if you try to wipe it off when it's wet, all it's going to do is smear and make 10 times worse of a mess. All right, so now that I got this thing back together, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a small bead of silicone and basically go into any of these gaps and make sure that this thing is 100% sealed. One final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of silicone on the tabs that hold the, uh, the two halves together just to try and help seal those up as well. All right, so this light's done. I'm going to go ahead and get it mounted back in the car, and then I'll show you guys what it looks like when we're done. All right guys, I went ahead and popped the headlight back in the car. And as you can see, it looks basically like brand new. Um, a pair of aftermarket non-Ford headlights for this thing run anywhere from $100 to $150. So this fix cost me $5 worth of silicone and some time. So as you can see, I saved quite a bit of money doing this. This procedure is also basically the same for taillights. Taillights also have a seam running around the outside that separates the lens from the back of the taillight. Take the lens off, clean it out, silicone that edge back up, put the lens back on, good to go. So I'll bring you guys in for some close-ups, but with that, thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, hit like. If you want to see more content, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.